All right, what is up, guys, and welcome to the Team Builder versus the, actually Vepsis and his Helsinki Hydragons uh, finals, actually in UBL. Kind of big, definitely kind of big. Uh, before going in, I really just want to warn you that I have have a very very tough cough. Um, had it since uh, a few days back. Um, you know, having a kid means that um, you know you get everything, every cold you possibly can think of, you'll get it. Uh, hence why I've been sick like three times in like I, I always said I've been playing this for roughly two three months so I've been sick three times as a record so that's kind of frustrating knowing that uh, I tend to get sick one time each month from going you know sick once a year I thought I was one of the people that never got sick uh, apparently I'm just not very very good at socializing that might actually be half the truth so that said, <laughs> um, going into the game itself, um, I'm gonna cover Vips' team at first. He did a few changes, <coughs> and these changes were among, of course, me losing my Greninja, which I had on my team, to giving that to him, in exchange for him losing Stami, and he actually gave up on Mega Lopani for Mega Gallade. So that those are two changes, which one of them I definitely prefer, which is not dealing with Mega Lopani. That means that I potentially can be outspeeding, but uh, Greninja is still a very, very big threat. I'm going to treat it as such. Uh, depending on how I want to view things, it could be very, very tough to deal with. Um, one thing that has been very good with Vepsis throughout this season, and this is the only thing I can take in going into this game, is that he's been consistently, like acting on his playstyle. He plays bulky offense, but he rarely goes for choice items, uh, mainly scarves if anything, so i going to have that strat in mind, like he could throw me off, absolutely, but I don't think he will, um, because last time he could play a very, very bulky game and force me out, and I think he's gonna pull the same weight here. Uh, his team is as follows, Curran Black, Landris Varian, Greninja, Muck, the law and form, Rotom Heat, Whimsicard, Bronson, Configricus, Seismitoad, Gramble, and Glade. Uh, also should be said, he dropped Weezing for Gramble. Um, now there are a few iffy Pokemon here uh, that I think could make it, and I'm just gonna say it as it is. I need to design my team with the mindset that he's gonna bring certain individual Pokemon here, which means that I'm gonna ignore certain matchups. Uh, and hope that that will work because he's absolutely gonna bring Curran Black, Landorus, Greninja, Rotom Heat for sure. Kefigricus makes sense because the only Pokemon that could potentially wall out Conkeldor will be Kefigricus. That means this last Pokemon is gonna be either Glade or it could be potentially Bronzong. Bronzong makes a lot of sense for this matchup, but I think Mega Glade overall is stronger. So that's the Pokemon I'm debating. Now, he could bring also a Lola Muck. But I feel the way it was used last game, and of course me having Saigard, that I potentially can wall it out, I hope, so he, can, he decides not to bring it. But that's only my hopes at best. And I'm definitely gonna, of course, involve for that, that if if I'm getting that wrong, certain matchup here will not be as strong. Um, the first and foremost Pokemon I'm gonna bring is Tangrove. This is a Pokemon that could deal with Gallade head-on. It could potentially deal with the physical variant of a Curum Black. Uh, because it's either going to be physical or special. The special set makes sense to an extent with um, Ice Beam and whatnot, but I feel due to um, me not bringing the energy last time that he's going to be physical uh, and his weather has Iron Head and whatnot. <coughs> oh dear lord. Um, he could potentially have that. Uh, since he's not a C user, he could still have that physical um, exclusive move for Curum Black, Free Shock, stuff like that, but then I have a chance to switch out, and of course my only switch in there would be. As you guys see on my screen here, Scissor. So that's something. That tax here is quite simple. Um, able to deal with the most of the matchup I could be facing. We have Giga Drain, we have Hidden Power, Ice, Earthquake, and Knockoff. Earthquake is for Alola Muck, actually. So <laughs> if it comes, it comes. But my initial thought here is Giga Drain is overall very, very good. The only Pokemon coming in on that naturally are actually uh, Curum Black and uh, Alola Muck. But as I said, I don't fear necessarily Alola Muck. Other than that, Gidrain is just overall a very, very good move. Uh, makes a fair amount of damage to Config Rikus. Um, then we have Hidden, like I said, Hidden Bar Eyes with Landers and Landers alone. It can be a C user, so C Fly makes sense. Um, gonna watch out for that if that happens. And of course, Earthquake, Knockoff, or Filler moves the best. Knockoff works 
well overall as a neutral play, um, depending on what he brings. But overall, Tangrowth, very standard for this matchup. Uh, the other Pokemon here are um, Dainchi, relaxed variant this time around. And I'm actually going to use a Berberi here. here. Ber bleh, Berberi Berry. That's very hard to say. Um, this set here is quite simple as um, we are going by um, being very, very, very offensive with some defense investment. Dainchi is actually naturally bulky, so should be able to take a few hits naturally. And the only Pokemon that potentially Wally is set is Bronze Song, which I don't believe is going to make it. Um, the attacks here are quite straightforward. Power Gem, Moonblast, Trick Room, Stealth Rocks. Trick Room is only there for um, if things go kind of down and I need to outspeed something. Uh, both Scissor and Congelder are naturally slower, even Jelly Scent to an extent, and even Tangrowth. My team here is overall very slow, so I could potentially use that to my advantage. And um, the engine's main role here is actually kind of force out Gallade and revenge kill potentially Cure and Black. And get up Self Rock. Self Rock is very good for this team since Cure and Black and Rotom Heat are the main threats here. We need to treat that as such. So, yeah, pretty simple set. Uh, I was debating having a more defensive set, but realized if I pull off a Trick Room, the Yenji puts a lot of natural pressure. Um, then we have Thunderous, which. I've been debating for two sets. Since it has Gramble and Landorus, I've been debating if I can use a Defiant variant of Landorus to get it with Bulk Up and Sea Fly, because it does a lot of damage towards his team. Um, only issue with that, and the reason I'm not having that, is because Config Recurse, because it ruins um, my course ability and also makes Landorus that much more effective. And just overall, if that's a Stone Edge Landorus variant, um, <coughs> I can't too, do too much towards that anyway, so I decided that um, I go for a special set and hoping that works. Uh, if anything, um, the filler moves on landers are quite effective, and I don't expect Seismito to make it, um, which is why we don't have such, something like um, Grass Knot, for example. Um, but yeah, set is it just outspeed Gallade, which is a fast Pokemon field. The only Pokemon outspeeding speeding are Whimsicott and Greninja. Which is why they have the Yasha Barrier to make sure that Greninja can't revenge kill uh, Thunderous if it needs to. And of course, if we face a Scarf Cure in Black, that Ice Beam won't matter either. And granted, that will actually connect to Focus Blast with Thunderbolt, Hidden Part of Ice, and Focus Blast, Nasty Plot. Um, this set could potentially sweep. This is heavily based on which matchup I'm fending off against. But since I'm, like I said before, even going, going over all this. I'm heavily suggesting that I don't won't be facing a Lola Muck here. Um, that's my hopes at best. Um, my candidate is doing his thing. Um, so, I found a little format. Okay. Uh, hey. Good thing we're recording live. Um, anyway, um, since I'm insisting that I won't be facing off against. Um, um, uh, Landers, or I mean Alola Muck, I really really hope just that uh, I can get something out of that. Uh, that's my initial hope at least. Like if Alola Muck is coming, I won't be able to Nasty Blot, I need that Pokemon Whittle down. Um, and in theory, uh, I need it to be below 50%, but at the same time it could potentially carry a berry. So it's gonna be rough, and it's gonna be rough naturally. Um, so if I miss cut that or miss my situation, then it's gonna be tough. Um, and also the reason we go in kind of special is because Config Reek is just, like I said, shit on Thunder's physical set. And it has better physical prowess than it has special attack. So in theory, it should be more effective. Though, you know, as stated, you know, this is all in theory. We'll see what happens. But that's my thought behind it. Um, then we follow that up with, uh, of course, our main response to... Um, um, Gallade here. I, I'll definitely debate that this is the main set, but quite frankly, um, Scissor makes a ton of sense for this matchup as it really, really, while Rotom Heat is walling the set, everything else are struggling versus uh, the Scissor, which is good. Uh, we have an Adamant variant this time around with a stat distribution that is. <coughs> <coughs> oh my god, this cough is so killing me. Um, a stat distribution that is heavily focused on being just that 
It's bulkier. We have some attack investment, but it's not gonna matter. It's just to focus on the little down Pokemon. I barely have any defense investment because it naturally is very bulky. That 150 base is something to watch out for. Um, the attacks here are simple as follow. Bullet Punch, U-Turn. U-Turn is only there to pipe the round if that happens. Rotom Heat is such an easy switch into this set, so my initial hope is that, you know, we can pivot around that and get momentum. Uh, we have Toxic if Kafagrikus is the response and Roost just to stall out the Toxic turns. So yeah, it's um, it's a, I would say a bit of um, stally set if anything, but my hope is that it's gonna work anyway. Uh, but we'll see. Um, Scissor is absolutely crucial for this matchup because it does so well to a certain matchup. And if it is a physical cure, which I very well could see this time around, Scissor is going to be invaluable. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens, if anything. Um, you guys hear how, how unsure I am about this matchup. I really, really hope this is going to work. Um, Conk Elder um, was... Uh, against him first time, very, very, very wasted versus an Alola Muck, which I should have gone for Drain Punch, I didn't do that, and I got ruined just due to it. Um, Alola, Alola Muck, but no. <coughs> Conkeldur is very important for this matchup. Uh, I was considering going Life Orb, Shea Force, but I really want something to switch into Naturally Rotom, since I'm actually disregarding Saigar for this matchup. Um, the stats here are as follows, a bit of an HP, a lot of physical prowess, and a lot of special defense. Um, it can stay naturally against a lot of matchup, and it can actually punish a lot of matchup. 140 base attack is something that's very hard to switch into, and I hope we get something out of that. Uh, the combination here uh, is Drain Punch, Knock Off, Ice Punch, Mag Punch. Mag Punch is only there for Greninja in theory, uh, while it could go against Cure and Black, I guess. Uh, it's better for me of going for potentially a Dream Punch versus that set. <coughs> the main issue with Conkeldur, and this is going to be a probably something I need to respond properly to in the game, is that there are a few switches here I can't do well against. Kafegrikus, for example, do all out this set, and if it has will Always, for example, it's going to get rough, uh, because Mummy, of course, uh, neglect the potential will Always we could be carrying, and of course, Galayer can come in on this set to potentially set up, depending on how we want to view things. Um, However, um, Conkeldur should be able to take a Sun Headbutt without any issue from full. Uh, the issue I have, of course, that Ice Punch really isn't doing anything against Gallade, so it's a, it's it's troublesome at best. Um, the last set we're bringing here are the... Oh, dear God, I saw this. Hey. All right. Uh, <laughs> Necromedusa, the Calm Jelly Scent with a Wakamberry this time around. Uh, this set is something I've used before against Curum Blacks. Uh, it's since Jelly Sand is such a good Pokemon overall against this team. I can only I'll imagine that Curum Black is going to carry Fusion Bolt, so we should be able to. Um, oh, this guy see very bulky. Um, the attacks here are as followed. I have no idea. I'm so glad I watched this before we're having the game. I actually having games in a few hours, so I'm very happy that I saw this. This could have been tough. Uh, this is that there is called Hex, not Shadow Ball Surf. I actually took the wrong Jelly Scent on the point of team. I'm very happy I saw this. Um, will always recover. Uh, this set here is basically to burn everything. Uh, he has so many Pokemon that are physical offensive that if I can land, burn Landers, Curum Black, Gilead, I'm gonna be in a very good spot. Uh, now, I consider to have a Culverberry for taking potential knockoffs from Gallade, but realize that um, Gallade I can deal with in different ways, potentially. Um, of course, Scissor being very effective versus that, so my initial thought is that I'm better off dealing with Curum Black, which is harder for me to switch into. Um, so, with that covered, I mean, it's a it's your basic... Uh, let's see, and set. It's your basic... Um, it's and this team as follows are a very, very bulky team. I'm trying to play the same way he's playing, which is bulky offense, but with only one real setup sweeper. The other ones are supportive teams. Um, Thunders is my main response to all of his uh, attackers, if anything. I can gather wall out a few things. Jellicent and Sister and Danishi do force out plays or force switches, if anything. 
So I need to get rocks up early, and I need to overall play very, very smart around this. Um, that said, I kind of need to say it as it is. Like, his team on paper are by far better than my team. Um, the matchup, it just isn't there. Um, so while I predicted the, the, the potential matchup we're going to face off against, I also know that even if it is the team I'm predicting, I'm going to have a tough time. Vepsis went through this season undefeated. He beat me 4-0. And he just... He has this way of playing. He's very, very smart how he plays the game. He's very analytic. And um, I really need to force him to play passive. And I don't believe I have the matchup to pull that off. I am bringing a very, very defensive team. And I'm not sure that's the right thing to do. Uh, I had a few ideas. And I should probably throw this out. Um, with... Um, of course, Saigar that didn't make it. That this set it wasn't that. Never mind. Um, there it is. And this set was potentially to be able to deal with him rather nicely. Uh, Dragon Dance, of course, outspeed his Gallade uh, or Greninja. I mean, <laughs> but just the matchup isn't there. Even with the Yasha Berry, it's just not going to be able to pull in the punches. So. <coughs> <coughs> As I said there, I'm I'm going into this game hoping that even if I don't win, that I know giving a good challenge. Um, I want a very, very interesting game and I want a game that I can be proud of. Uh, if I win, I win. Like, that that would be really nice, but I, I'm very aware of what I'm fending off against here and I'm going to treat it as such. I'm going to do my very best, but this is a, both a team or um, a team I probably can't beat and a player that is way beyond my level it is a skill level difference here and I can't deny that so with that said we're gonna have some kind of transition here so yeah here is the matchup and yeah we're gonna have a post comment that of course my cough has not given up nor has the medicine helped that very much to be honest um, I think I've predicted the matchup quite right here. There were a few things that I felt shaky about, but we don't see a lot of muck, which is great. Uh, it was something that uh, I'm not going to say I avoided it, but rather I thought it was not a very good bring first time. So I was hoping that he was debating not to bring it this time. And I think it worked out just fine. Um, other than that, you know, the matchup is still very tough, and um, I'm still going to find ways to try to deal with it. Um, now, from the get-go here, I'm thinking his best lead was going to be Rotom Heat. So, that's the initial thought we're going with. I'm going to lead off with Daenchi, hoping that uh, uh, I'm going to get something out of that. If anything, uh, I really want to force that. It's either going to be that or Greninja makes a ton of sense too. But, I think Daenchi overall just makes very, very good sense for this matchup. Uh, the only thing I'm fearing as a lead is Landers Ferian and Curran Black, for example. Curran Black, after all, can have Iron Head and that's something I'm really scared of. So, with that said, let's go into the game itself. I gotta say, though, I was very nervous going into this because I really, really, really don't... Um, I never liked the matchup here whatsoever, and uh, I'm still debating, <laughs> you know, what can I do versus this. My opponent here leads off with Cure and Black, <coughs> which... Not at all has me very, very scared and very, very, very sad. So, with that in mind, I am predicting the Iron Head. I think that makes a ton of sense for him. So, I'm going to bring in Necromedusa, my Jelly Synth, um, And we're going to take the Iron Head. So, we predict that, right? And the damage is so high that I was bidding. It's either going to be Adamant or it could be Banded. But I was feeling probably just Adamant and just do a ton of damage. So, I went for Will Wisp here, hoping I could bait a Fusion Ball. But it probably, as for this foreseen, is Banded. Uh, so the other side comes in, uh, since I have a Wacken Berry, I don't want to pop that berry just yet, so I'm going to send in Conk Elder um, to try to soak damage from the Rotom uh, as it goes to Volt Switch. And since I don't have Psyguard, yeah, that Volt Switch is very, very, very free. And uh, he brings in Matthews the Glade, and this was what I was fearing. I did not want to be in a situation where Glade gets a free setup, but yet here we are, turn free and just it feels very bad uh, so he goes for his mega evolution the only play I have now to be able to win this if it goes for a close combat after the sword stance I'm bulky enough to survive that I go for a u-turn force him out with 
thunderous. That was my only plan here, because besides that, I really don't have a proper response to the Gallade. Uh, as, you know, I'll say it as it is. From my perspective, I thought I was in a fair place. I absolutely thought I was. But he has Fire Punch. And that knocks out my sister directly. I was thinking, alright, fine. Uh, I still have one other Pokemon that can ship damage on him, and that is actually my Dayenshi. So just get Moonblast and then force him off with uh, with a Thunderbolt. But he has Leaf Blade too, and I was like, okay, no, 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 this is... Uh, I'm losing this. I'm losing to just one setup of Gallade. I was... Oh, this was so tough. Um, my Tiger can take a hit here, but I cannot bring him down to range where, of course, that knocks him out. Um... But I should say, luckily for me, we score an Earthquake crit here. But it's still not in range. It's actually far from it. Um, so I need to play some kind of cheeky game here, trying to get Curse Body kick in with a Jelly Synth. And then from there, hopefully, um, get some momentum. But no, it goes for Drain Punch, and I cannot take a Leaf Blade. So I need to force out Tangrove and go back to the Bowie Raichu, the Tangrove, and. Um, he goes for a leaf blade there again. So at this point I was thinking, you know, you see how I play here. I go back and forth with Jelly Sense. He's not going to go Fire Punch this time, right? Yes, yes he is. And he's going to knock out Tangrove. Now I was like, oh, okay, no, this is this is over. Um, I'm actually going to send in Thunderous here just to get some damage. But at this point I've lost the game. I'm basically hoping Mag Punch eventually do something versus this. But no. Uh, luckily, I should say my opponent here switches out. Uh, thinking that I was a C fly set, which was good, <coughs> <coughs> because that meant I was not swept by the Glade set, uh, which I was so convinced that I was gonna be. But I'm, I'm not in a good spot here. I at least it's not a six zero yet, so I'm I'm okay with that. As my opponent here goes for a volt switch, and I was thinking, right, he's gonna bring back Glade. What's he gonna do? If that's the case, I'm gonna go for a Mac punch. But no, he goes to Forgotten. And as stated before, and I'm pretty sure this is a locked set, but potentially banded more due to the damage, not scarfed. So I'm actually staying in there, and I'm staying in hoping I can survive an outrage, but no, I was thinking I was going to take a fusion ball, of course. But no, 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 we're going down. So at this point, alright, let's hope that Necromedusa can score either a cursed body for the outrage, right? It's either that or the confusion can kick in, I guess. But, um, I mean, that's my only play now. I'm getting swept by the QRM. It's It's over. The curse body do not kick in, and I was like, okay, GG, that's it. He gets confusion though, which could be good. It, it could be, it shouldn't be, but it is at least there. So um, I'm hoping he hits himself with confusion, because I need a nasty block behind me to kill this. Uh, as it switches out, which is awesome, um, so Rotom comes in. Uh, the only way I can kill a Rotom is uh, by going for Focus Blast and connect that. Um, and that's what I'm going to go for. Uh, that's the only play I have at this point. Um, as luckily for me, we do connect the Focus Blast. So that means at least that we're not our 6th toad. I mean, we get the 5-0. I'm there. I'm, I'm feeling it. Um, <laughs> we're not looking pretty. As it goes to Matthews, actually, the Glade, which I thought was strange at first. Because, after all said, we do have Thunderbolt and it's well within range of killing him. And I think he realizes that as he goes to Wainfall. His Landos. I really, I don't see the play behind that, or if he's checking out if I'm fine or not, which I aren't. I'm of course the prankster set because why not? As um, I go with Hidden Power Ice just to uh, get him going, if anything. But yeah, that's that's fine, I guess. So it's a 4-0 at this point. So that's that's okay. As Ben just comes in, so I know he's scouting for potentially, um, or what I could only think that is. Um, um, some kind of ship damage on me as we actually score a paralyzation here, which is great. And not, not only that, I'm getting fully paralyzed, which is even greater. Uh, so with that said, I actually went for another nasty plot just to guarantee the KO on the cure in black um, with focus blast. Granted that it isn't potentially scarf and like that. And we get a second paralyzation on the Kyofi Grikus, um, which means we can potentially knock this Pokemon out, of course. So it's potentially a 3 0. So that's that's great um as Greninja come in i was hoping you know i could potentially bait him here to go for an ice beam right uh but it actually goes for a u-turn just to ship me down 
um, which is fine. He needs some ship on me, of course, and it does roughly 5%. So I was a bit scared about that, uh, depending on which set he has. And I'm going to sack play the Matthews. As uh, I still need to go for Focus Blast versus Secure in Black, I cannot go for Thunderbolts there um, at all. And it's a potential 2 0, I guess. As uh, he goes back to Scarf Tongue. So I think, alright, this time I can bait him, of course. He's gonna go for an Ice Beam, of course, and we don't can do anything about that. But no, he goes again for U turn. And the reason that's kind of good is because he's gonna U turn into his Cure in Black. And since we went for a second uh, Nasty Plot, we actually can't do it Cure the Cure in Black, granted it isn't Scarf Adamant. But like I said before, we are pretty sure this is a um, Bandit variant. <coughs> and the only way to find that out is, of course, by going for that second Thunderbolt. And what do you know? We knock him out too. So the only Pokemon left now is the Greninja. And um, I'm pretty sure the only thing that can happen now... If the, the difference between winning or losing is if you get an Ice Beam and it gets me frozen. So the Yasha Bear is going to pop, and that's quite alright, if anything. And um, yeah, it does some damage, but... We don't get frozen, so Thunderbolt is actually gonna KO, and we win this game super unfairly 1-0, and um, I really have no words. Like, we talked for a long bit after this game, and I really want to enforce anything before I even covered what happened, that I only won because of hacks. I really, really want to enforce is that. It doesn't matter what um, people are seeing for this matchup, it's extremely clear that Hax is such a big factor. <coughs> Mainly because um, getting paralyzed Configuricus meant that he didn't get any ship on my Thunderous, and it only required one Shadow Ball connection to actually potentially win this game at the end there. Um, other than that, uh, we, we debated afterwards what risk he should and shouldn't have taken. And uh, when he had his Gallade set up with Sword Stance, I actually had no way of knocking him out. Uh, the only reason he was switching out was because he was thinking that I was potentially C Electrium C or C Fly. And while I think that made sense, uh, it also meant that he was making a switch out instead of um, risking it, which meant that I got. I wouldn't say back on my feet, because I still wasn't in a very good spot, It, uh, but it just meant that the Glade didn't sweep, but I'll be honest, you know, had I went for Thunderbolt, it would have lived, Glade would knock out my Thunderous with a Fire Punch, and I wouldn't have been able to come back from that. Uh, the, my remaining Pokemon in Conkeldur and uh, Jellicent could not deal with that. Um, they were knocked out too by that very same Glade. Uh, the other situation is whether or not I should have risked it with Cure and Black, now, I'll be honest and say that I was, I had, um, my high hopes were, was on the curse battle on Jelly Sin to lock out Outrage to me going for a nasty plot, knowing he was locked into that. That didn't come to fruition, so it basically became, um, 25% versus 75 of the confusion whether he hits himself or not, or I think it's a 50-50. Uh, he, he decided against it instead of sack playing Cure and Black, potentially, um, had he gone, go, gone through and went for the Outrage, he would have knocked me out, hands down, like that's... that, that it, no, no, Nothing on my team was going to be able to take that, and I'm, I'm super aware of that. Um, so, so that's the thing, like, going back, looking at this game... Uh, and of course, like I said, the Paralyzation here, going for a second Nasty Plot, which could very well just have been risky, but that was the difference between me and absolutely killing Cure in Black, or just being ranged of potentially killing Cure in Black. Uh, since I didn't go for Mac Punch, which config oh, my config Ricos, which no, I mean my Congelder, which potentially could have put uh, put it in range. I mean, not putting the nasty plot here to, of course, the second nasty plot to be in range. <sighs> like, I'm, I'm, I, I never felt so ashamed winning a game. Like, my opponent here was way over my head when it went through this game. Like, there was. I had no response for Gallade. I did not expect a Fire Punch Leaf Blade variant of Gallade. I'll, I'll be honest and say it straight on down. I couldn't. And me winning because I forced him out and made a few, I guess, tweaks and risky plays and then let the game intervene with hacks. It's. 
I can't say anything but that Vepsis is the true champion of this league. He went undefeated, he lost to Hacks, and that's how good he is. Like, I need a game to intervene to be able to even be close to dealing with him. And while I, I guess it's fun that Thunderous found a way, you know, knocking out the whole team alone, I still know how this game should have went down. It, he was the fair winner here. I really want to enforce that that was what's going to happen. The Yasha Berry do save me here in the end, but I also know that he had to connect a Shadow Ball. I would still not be able to take that Ice Beam at the end. So, it's a very empty victory. Like, I gladly had lost this game knowing my opponent did way better than me, but now I win because of all the wrong reasons, and I'm... It's very hard to... <coughs> to call myself the champion of this league, knowing how it went down. Though, it is a game of chance, and sometimes you gotta play the odds, I've just... It was never my intention to play them, nor go in for them, so I feel, like I said, somewhat ashamed of this victory. Um... That said, make sure to check out Vips' side. I really, really, really hope he isn't too devastated by this, this loss. Um, and if anything, I'll, I'll heavily enforce that this is a very, very unfair title I'm getting. While I will, uh, since I promised Otto to somewhat cherish it, I did not want to win like this. I really, really didn't. And I'm talking way longer than I need to, but I just really want to enforce that this... This victory was not a worthy one, and Vipsis, in my honest opinion, is the true champion of this league. He owns the first 10 turns, and he plays one passive plays, allows me to come back, and the game itself punish him for it. <coughs> and I think it's so unfair, I really do. Um, so everybody who's been joining, I really want to say, of course, thank you for following me throughout this season. Um, the final did not turn out as I thought it would, both in matchup and in the exchange of turns that I was hoping for. It went from one sweep to another. So yeah, I don't know what I feel, how I feel about that. Uh, but I really hope you guys enjoyed this game anyway. And uh, yeah, to everybody else who's been in the final UPL, make sure to check out where the main season starting, of course. But they're going to start whenever. They're going to start soon, I know that for sure. So thank you for watching, guys. I've been said it three or four times now. And take care. Bye, guys.